Hey guys, it's Jeff with Fonda Plate, and we're here today to show you how to make a ditty pole. Some people call them a bank pole, but where I'm from, we call it a ditty pole. Um, real quick, we'll go over what you're going to need for this. I will put a description um, of all these parts down there so that you don't miss anything if you're trying to build one. Um, so first thing we need is a 10-foot piece of Schedule 40 PVC pipe. You can do this with an 8-foot piece, but I prefer the 10 gives me a little more versatility when I'm out there on the banks. So we're also going to need a hacksaw. We need two pieces of wood. They don't have to be anything special. Um, we need a set of channel locks or some kind of wrench to tighten a, a bolt with. We've got some number 64 uh, rubber bands. We've got some um, one and a half ounce egg sinkers. We've got some eight aught double action circle hooks. We've got some number one aught barrel swivels. We've got some uh, black tarred uh, line that uh, is rated for, I believe, 113 pounds. Um, I've had no problems with fish getting off of this. We need some electrical tape, a blowtorch. You can use a heat gun. I don't own one, so I use a blowtorch. We need a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. We need a quarter inch eye bolt. Now these eye bolts come with just a regular nut. I do not like these, so I take these off, throw them in your toolbox, throw it away, whatever. I like to use a lock nut, and you'll see why here in a little bit. We need a Sharpie, a measuring tape, and some reflective tape. So to start this project, what we're gonna do is, and it doesn't obviously matter which end you start with here, but we are going to measure and mark this at 36 inches. There we go. And then we're going to come from the other end and we are going to measure this at 30 inches. Oh, I can hook my tape. 30 inches. Um, now on this 30 inch side, I'm going to go ahead and just draw that circle all the way around. This is going to work as a reference point for me um, when I'm driving this into the bank um, to let me know how deep I've got the pole in to make sure that no big kitties pull this thing out of the bank. So now that we've got that started, we're going to go ahead and take our half inch cap, okay? And from the end that you measured the 36 inches is the end that you want to put that on. You can, by all means, cement this if you want. But you'll see here in a minute, I'm going to drill a hole and stick the eye bolt through it. So I don't think the cement really is going to help you at all on this. So now that we've got that done, we're going to take our drill, hit our drill bit, okay? And we are going to drill a hole through this. I can get this to, to hold up for me there. There we go. And just right about halfway down the cap. Gonna drill a simple simple little hole there now this is where your eye bolts gonna go that's why I was saying I don't think it's really that important to, to cement it because we're gonna lock this bolt on there that's gonna hold everything together it's not going anywhere um, before I do that though um, because I'm a big fan of the polymer knot I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my line and my rule of thumb okay is I, I do this line two feet shorter than what my PVC pipe is. So I've got a 10 foot, I'm six foot tall, there's six foot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break off another, you know, probably three feet because I'm gonna tie and cut some off. So that'll give me roughly about eight feet of line, which is where I wanna be. Um, where did my, oh, my knife is over here. I will give that a cut. Now the reason I'm skipping to this part is because I like um, I like using a polymer knot, so I'm going to get this doubled up and tie my polymer knot on here. The polymer knot is a little tougher to, to, to get on with this line, so you kind of just got to take it slow and kind of work it together, but I just have always been a fan of the polymer knot. Um, 
it really tough to break off. So I just kind of help it along a little and get it get it tied up. All right, there we go. We'll trim off just a little bit of this. There we go. Now we can go ahead and get this mounted on. We'll take that, we'll stick our eye bolt through. We'll get our lock nut. And we will nut that down. I do like to keep my eye bolt um, parallel, if you will, with the with the board compared to perpendicular. I like it. I like it like this. Um, all I've got is channel locks with me, so that's what I'm going to use to tighten this bolt up with. And we are just going to get that Channel locks keep letting loose on me, but that's okay. We will get it done anyways. Uh, we're gonna do it like this. Get a hold of it and twist the eye. That's <laughs> yeah, working a little better for me. there good and that is not going to go anywhere so now we're going to come back down over here to the other end where we marked the 30 inches okay and this is where the blowtorch or the heat gun comes in um, depending on what you want to use like i said either is fine i just happen to have a blowtorch so that's what we're going to use i'm going to get that lit and we're going to sit here and we are gonna heat up this end of the pipe. I wanna heat up about an inch and a half to two inches of this pipe. Now this blowtorch is a lot hotter than a, than a heat gun, so keep the pipe moving, keep the torch moving. Um, otherwise, it'll just heat up really, really fast and not heat all the way through. And we really need this whole thing to heat through. Um, we are doing this outside because heating up this PVC pipe, it can put off some kind of nasty fumes. So I recommend this to be a garage or outdoor project. And then every now and then you'll see I'm going to point this torch to the middle um, because I need to heat the inside of the pipe up also. And you see we're starting to, to bow out and char up a little bit. That's okay. All right, we just need a good... And heat it up. Oh, the torch went out. There we go. Go back to heating that up. I'm getting it good and hot. Going on the inside again. All right. She's nice and hot. So while it's good and hot, we take our boards, that's what these are for, we set that down on there, take your other board, and just squish, and really put some pressure on that. You want to seal it together, and I like to keep the pressure on there for a minute or two, um, while that PVC pipe cools and, and starts to harden back up, you are going to have to give it, um, before you can go to the next step, you're going to have to give it probably five minutes to really soften up and, um, or excuse me, soften up, to really harden up before you can um, cut it for the next step. Hi. They're caught in the line. Here. Our dogs are out here being crazy together. Okay, so that's nice and pressed. As you can see, it's still a little soft, okay? So that will harden up as it cools down. So while that is doing that, we'll go ahead and go back to the other end here and start working on it. So we've tied our line. As I said, this is eight foot of line, okay? Which I always like to be two feet shorter than the pole. Um, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna take 
one of our one aught barrel swivels, okay? And we're gonna tie just a simple little cinch knot on there. So that's just come through the come through the eye. All right, I stick my finger in there, okay? And I know some people sit here and twist the swivel. I, I don't know how I've always done it is just like this. With this thicker line, you don't need to do as many wraps because it, it gets plenty of tension. Um, the thinner your line, like when you're dealing with monofilament and things like that, it, the more wraps I'll do um, because it just takes more wraps to get the friction to hold the knot. Um, but with this thick tar rope, we don't need very many wraps. So there we go. See, that's not going anywhere. Now, what we want to do is grab our, our spool and we want to we want to get about you know roughly a two foot liter your waters you know you might have to adjust that a little bit um you know you might want 18 inches you you might want two and a half feet um it just kind of depends on where you're fishing and what and what you're doing so we're going to grab one of our eight dot um double action circle hooks and when it comes to circle hooks, I'm a firm believer there's only one way to tie them, and that is the snell knot. So the snell knot, and all these knots, we're going to do another video, guys, of really showing you all the different knots you can use and, and the applications for each knot. But you come in from the hook side like that and pin it down to the shank. You give it a couple of wraps around the shank, and then you take your other end, and you come back out the hole, okay? I love this knot, um, one, because it's an extremely strong knot. Um, two, it works really well with the circle hook. Um, and three, I, I fish at night a lot, so vision's not very good, so this is a really easy knot to tie in the dark, uh, and you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to it. So now we're just gonna take our, our leader line, and we're gonna tie it to the other end of our swivel with the same cinch knot we did before. A couple twists and through the hoop back through the other hoop um, and we pull it tight as y'all can see I'm leaving some leader line that is not a big deal catfish are not line shy um, so they don't care about it okay oh I did it again um, I get ahead of myself y'all so we're gonna cut this Back off at our leader. There we go. Hopefully I don't cut my fingers off or otherwise y'all are going to get a real good show today. So we got that off. I totally forgot my egg sinker. Got to have the sinker on there, guys. Uh, come over here, monkey. All right, well, give me a second. So, egg sinker on your main line, okay? Then the swivel. So once again, just gonna cinch that back up. There we go. So that is the business end of our line. As you can see, egg, swivel, hook. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to move all this back down. And where I made that 36 inch mark, okay, this is where the rubber band comes in. Um, anyone who jug lines or trot lines or anything knows that these things get tangled up and they become a big pain in the butt. Um, so this is how I deal with that on these and make it um, much easier to store and transport. And it'll make your deployment of these a lot better. So I take my electrical tape, okay, and right there at that that 36 inch mark that I marked earlier I'm gonna I'm gonna do two wraps with the electrical tape one two okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rubber band and this part 
is, in my opinion, very crucial. Um, you need to make sure that your rubber band is in line with your with your eye bolt. Okay, so we're going to take that and we're going to bring this electrical tape through the rubber band. Okay, so just double check that you're lined up. We're good, and we're going to give it another two or three wraps through the rubber band. Okay, we'll do one more just for good luck. There. All right, now that you've done that. You're gonna take your rubber band and you're going to pin it down just like that. And we're gonna go over it another two or three times. Okay, make sure you get that electrical tape tight. And then I like to come on down the pipe, you know, two inches or so, and just make sure that we're, we're nice and tight and grabbed on there. Okay. There we go. Snap that off, boom, you're ready to go. Now, while that end is, is still cooling, um, it's probably almost ready, but we're gonna say it's still cooling right now. Um, I have some reflective tape. I recommend using this because most of the time you're out there setting these in the dark. And so when it's time to go check them or pull them, they sometimes can be difficult to see. So if I put this electrical, or if I put this reflective tape um, here on the ends, it makes it real easy for me to shine my spotlight and, and, and pinpoint them. Um, so. Downfall to not having nails, y'all. And the peel stickers. So I just put two pieces. Um, it just, like I said, it just makes it easier for me to see. It doesn't matter what colors you use, just as long as it's something that is reflective that you can see, okay? So now that I have all that done, the way that I store mine, okay, is between the, the, the hole of the eye bolt and the nut, I wrap my line right around there, okay? Keeps everything nice and organized, handy, neat. We all like that, don't we? Um, and we're gonna just wrap that up until we get, you know, as I start to get close to that rubber band, okay, is when I look. And we'll go a couple more turns, and then we'll just take this, and we'll wrap it around our pole, okay? Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. And then I stretch my rubber band up, and voila. Now, this stays all nice and neat. You can stack them up dozens at a time. They're not gonna get all tangled up on you. Really gonna make life a lot easier. Now, I go ahead, and um, because once again, while you're out there in the dark setting these things, um, it can be tough to see. So, you know, if you have the reflective tape, why not? Some people, the black line is plenty right there, okay? But I go ahead and just stick myself a piece of reflective tape down here too. Um, that way, when I'm setting this in the ground, I can see this with my headlamp or whatever, and I know when I hit that that I've made it 30 inches into the ground, which is gonna give me enough support on this pole to make sure a big fish can't yank it out of the ground. So now, all right, we're good and hardened up here. Okay, so y'all can see that. Uh, I'm gonna stick this down on the piece of wood and I'm gonna grab my Sharpie, okay? And I'm just gonna draw some lines. And this doesn't have to be perfect, okay? We're basically just trying to make a spear point, okay? So you can look at that as a 90, a 45, a, a V, <laughs> whatever you wanna look at it as, okay? So we're just gonna make our marks there. And I'm gonna grab the old, the old hacksaw and we are going to do this. Okay, there's one. All right. So now we've got that pinned off. So you can see here, I've got a spear point. 
Okay, that's nice and hard. It's sharp. And we've sealed the end of this tube up. That way, when we drive it into the banks, uh, it's not going to fill full of dirt, mud, rocks, all that fun stuff. Now, the other thing that I will do, um, and I don't have it with me, but I will take my angle grinder um, with a sanding pad, and I will actually sand these edges so that they get even sharper. The sharper you can do, the better this thing will be. So there it is, folks. Quick, simple, easy ditty poles, ready to go and catch you some big flatheads. Y'all stay tuned because we will be doing a video following this up to show you where I go to set these ditty poles and what I'm looking for on the banks and in the water for the right placement for these.